If you're building a brand new PC today and you're not really familiar with all of the brands involved, then you probably wouldn't think twice about an NZXT motherboard. However, those familiar with PC hardware know that this is not a very frequent site. Instead, the big names like ASUS, MSI, and Gigabyte are the ones that come to mind first. But NZXT, being an extremely successful maker of cases and liquid coolers, they have their own style and unique way of doing things. So so what does that get you when it comes to motherboards? Well today that's exactly what we're going to find out. They've released a new N7 Z490 and I'm going to plug in an overclocked 10900K and see how this thing performs. So the motherboard really is the backbone of your entire gaming PC or workstation build and despite most modern boards giving you everything that you need to overclock your CPU and your memory and set custom fan curves, certain boards do have quirks or limits which ruin the entire experience of your build. So let's see how much NZXT got right with the new N7 Z490. Firstly let's start with the price which I'm told is $229 US and that place is this board in kind of the mid-range price bracket. Not really enthusiast tier, but definitely not what I'd call budget. In this price range, you're up against boards like the ASUS Strix Z490A and Gigabyte's Z490 Vision G. One thing though, this is definitely dressed up to look like an enthusiast tier board with a plate of white armor covering the majority of the PCB. And I think this is actually what might drive most mainstream consumers to consider this board over other $200 or so options. At least in terms of appearance, I think this is a pretty decent looking board. Of course, there is the concern of this trapping heat against the PCB, but it isn't covering any components that actually produce a lot of heat. That is until you reveal the two covers that allow you to install your M.2 drives. These covers don't have thermal pads, which is really unfortunate. So if you find that your M.2 drives are getting a bit toasty, you might want to leave these removed. Something else that is interesting is the VRM heatsink design, which is literally literally just a big slab of metal with no fin array at all, but instead a cylindrical hole through the center. This isn't the best way to maximize the surface area and cooling potential of a heatsink, but we'll see if it passes with an overclocked 10 core 10900K. But a couple of things that I am really excited to see here, the onboard power and reset buttons, which are located at the bottom. You just won't find these on boards in this price range. You also have debug LEDs located down here as well, although unfortunately, no postcode readout and also down here are three fan headers, three USB 2.0 headers and both a 5 volt and 12 volt RGB header. Since this is an NZXT board you've also got the NZXT Hue 2 specific RGB headers that you'd instead only find on their external lighting controller. So if you have NZXT Hue 2 RGB fans these can be plugged directly into the board via either of these two separate channels big fan of this. In terms of rear I.O., it's fairly typical for a board in this price range. You do get Wi-Fi 6 and 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is fairly standard across all Z490 boards, as well as four USB 3.2 Gen 2, one of those being Type-C, and two 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Now removing that big slab of metal that we'll call a VRM heatsink, we can reveal the VRM design and power circuitry that NZXT have gone with here. For a $229 board, the VRM here is okay. You can find something a bit more powerful from other boards in this price bracket, but this will be fine for the most powerful chip that you can throw in here, which is the i9-10900K. It's an eight plus two phase VRM setup controlled by an ISA 69269 PWM controller and that's handling 10 SIC 632As which are 50 amp power stages. One thing that I was really interested to see here was what does an NZXT motherboard BIOS actually look like and I was surprised to see how functional and familiar it was. They've stuck with a fairly similar layout and menu system from your typical brands and that is absolutely fine by me. You've got access to everything that you could need to overclock your CPU or memory including including adjustments for CPU power limits. There's no adaptive voltage mode, which is my preferred mode when overclocking, only fixed and offset, but that's not a huge deal for most users. I also couldn't find any fan curve user interface adjustments apart from just manually entering this in the text fields, but you will find that within NZXT's CAM software, so I don't think that's a big deal either. Overall, a pretty user-friendly and lightweight BIOS. But now let's take a look at what kind of performance you can expect when using the 
i9 10900K at stock. And the first thing to look for here is whether Intel's 125 watt sustained power limit will be enforced here or whether the N7 Z490 runs the CPU completely unlocked. It's important to mention that neither approach is the right approach as long as the power limits can be unlocked if the user chooses to do that. And here we're somewhere in the middle. NZXT have chosen not to fully enforce the power limit of 125 watts, but instead 150 watts. That means that the 10900K will still reduce its all core turbo to something like 4.6 gigahertz over a long duration in something intensive like Blender, but it won't be as handicapped as Intel's default spec of 125 watts. Also, the PWM controller that's being used here gives us full access to detailed VRM thermals when using software like Hardware Info, and after around 30 minutes of rendering while on the open test bench, VRM thermals topped out at 65C with stock settings. But now let's overclock the 10900K and see if we can push this a little further. Overclocking is pretty straightforward here. I've set a 51 core ratio multiplier for 5.1 gigahertz and then completely unlocked both the short duration and long duration power limits as well as the current limit. I then set the voltage to fixed mode for testing purposes, but for actual use, you might wanna use offset mode instead and then set 1.30 volts with the highest LLC mode level one. This had the CPU voltage under load settling in at 1.272 volts. Of course, you might want something a bit higher or lower depending on your specific CPU, but I know this is a fairly comfortable overclock profile for this particular chip. And now after around 30 minutes of rendering with the CPU overclocked, VRM temps are now raised to the mid 70s. This is absolutely fine, but if you are going to be running an overclocked 10900K on this board, just make sure that your case has enough airflow. These power stages can run a lot hotter than this and still be quite safe. So I'd say that NZXT's VRM here is definitely adequate, but nothing super impressive. And actually, I think this sums up this board as a whole. It functions as a very predictable and reliable mid-range Z490 board and has features that might be useful specifically to those with other NZXT products. However, if you really want the best when it comes to a $200 Z490 board, my personal pick would likely be Giga Gigabyte's Z490 Vision G. You get an additional four power stages for the VRM, a much more extensive rear IO, including Thunderbolt 3, an additional M.2 slot, and overall still a great looking board. However, for some reason, this board does lack integrated Wi-Fi 6 and an easily accessible clear CMOS button, which the NZXT N7 Z490 does have. So overall, a fairly decent mid-range Z490 offering from NZXT, and I think this is going to be mostly appealing to those that want that seamless NZXT integration with something like Hue 2 or maybe a matching board for the NZXT mid tower. Beyond that, it's an okay board, but definitely consider some other options that may give you some additional features or a better VRM. And it'll be interesting to see where NZXT goes beyond this. Are they looking to support AMD Ryzen processors, for example? That would be really interesting to see an X570 or B550 offering from them, especially with AMD Ryzen 4th gen just around the corner. As always, if you're interested, I will leave this link down below. A huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.